First of all, let me be honest for one second. Making a countdown of the hardest missions in either of the Mario Galaxy games wasn't nearly as easy for me as in Super Mario 3D World, mainly because it's been a while since I played through Mario's nunchuck adventures, but also because the easy levels in Galaxy 2 just seem to outweigh the hard levels much more so than in 3D World. Can you explain that a bit easier? And also, why didn't you say hi? In fact, whenever I think of a ball break admission from Galaxy 2, it's usually that ball breaking because there was a prankster comet in the vicinity. And since throwing in prankster comets is by far the best way to make levels harder without even really doing anything, I thought, fuck it. Let's count down the hardest prankster comet missions in Super- Why did you use a curse word? Super Mario Galaxy 2, because they might as well be the hardest levels in the game, period. Just like in my other top 10s, this list is based on my opinion. Don't blame me if you think I'm way off, but do feel free to discuss other missions that made you rage. And this should really go without saying. One thing that bothers me about this game is how forgettable half these galaxies are. Take the Slip Sand Galaxy, for example. Nothing to see here, just another desert level. Oh, there's way more than that. Just look at those things. Just look at those things right there. Don't you think this slide looks interesting? This main attraction is this half squid, half lizard guy called Squizzard. You probably forgot about this guy until you played Squizzard's Daredevil Run. Well, how the heck is Squizzard hard to defeat? Two words Fire Flower. I went on long enough in my last top 10 about how badly Mario controls with the Fire Flower, and now I'm expected to use this thing to burn his mouth? Of course most of the ground is covered in quicksand, so he gives you these stone platforms to stand on just to make you an easier target. I swear that's all there for, guys. When he hangs his mouth open, you have to hurl 5 fireballs at him to deal any damage, and if you take too long in between hits, he recovers and starts attacking you again. That's actually a big problem for me. His projectiles are still in the air by the time he exposes himself, so too often I end up flailing around to avoid the projectiles, and I can never get a hit on him. Then use player 2. Now where have I heard that one before? At first it's not all that bad, but I swear the more damage he gets he starts doping to get a faster recovery time or something like that. It's not really that fair that I'm stuck at one point of life in a fire flower that can only last like 20 seconds while Squizzard suddenly gets auxiliary support and throwing stuff at me. Give me a break already and let me hit- Oh fuck this! Again, you used a curse word. Throwback Throwdown Speedrun. I said I couldn't be bothered to remember half the galaxies in this game, but I had loads of fun with the other half. The Boss Blitz Galaxy really stood out to me during my initial run through, and unlike a certain other boss rush level, for the right reasons. I've squared off against Dino Piranha, King Caliente, Major Burrows, the dreaded Boulder Geist, and Fire Dino Piranha numerous times in Galaxy 1. But honestly, playing through all five of them in one mission didn't feel that bland, possibly because it was an actual throwback. You'll notice that the dev team went crazy with the throwbacks in Galaxy 2, I guess trying really hard not to alienate their longtime fans. Defeating all these guys in 5 minutes started out easy enough. If you're a really good player, you should be able to wipe through the first 4 in about 3 minutes. I think the only downside is not being able to choose the order in which you play these bosses, but it doesn't really matter since- Why? That shouldn't be a problem. Since they do a good enough job of saving the hardest one for less in- Exactly. Classic fashion. I rambled enough about Fiery Dino Piranha and Galaxy 1, but I should point out that he and Boulder Guys behave slightly different in this game, and I think that was to make this star a little easier to get. Boulder Guys no longer tries to punch you, and Fiery Dino Piranha runs a little slower than he used to. Putting on a little weight since we last met, have you been- Is- Is that just you, though? I don't think this star is that difficult to get. These guys do seem to be fan favorites, and I got in a lot of practice against them- Then why'd you even put it on your list? ...from speedrunning the star. I ended up basing this top- You were raging more about number 10. ...top 10 quite a bit on how consistent I was with each level, as well as my ability to ramble my thoughts on each one, so sorry if this video seems pointlessly long. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> Boomsday Machine Daredevil Run. I know Bowser Jr. is made out to be a brat, but at least Bowser knows how to dad. The dastardly doer are once again out to make sure Mario doesn't steal Bowser's galaxy-sized slice of cake. I guess we'll see how that works out. When you crash into Bowser Jr.'s boom bunker, you'll find that Bowser Jr.'s back is against the wall to the point where he'll actually try to stomp on you himself. His secret weapon? The Boomsday Machine, which of course was no match for Cloud Mario. So that doesn't stomp on you. We repair the machine and try it again, this time enlisting the aid of a Daredevil Comet because he can suddenly do that. You know the drill, get a bullet bill to bust open a glass dome, then defeat the Boomerang Brothers to reveal the launch star. Then cannon yourself to that totally unfamiliar poison swamp, well unless you've played the star a million times like I have, then ride the unstable platform all the way to the checkpoint. Okay, now the prankster comments have checkpoints? I'm sorry, but that just takes the fun out of them. That makes them nearly impossible if they didn't put that in, right? Just ask my good friend Mini Planet. So Junior finds Mini Planet? That's gotta be a username, not an actual name. Finally activates the boomsday machine, and you're left to guess when he's gonna suck all the clouds into some kind of force field, because remember, one hit ruins the most critical part of your run. That's nerve-wracking enough, but when the rest of the machine pops out of the ground, then you're gonna have some fun. He's so freaking high in the sky, and he shoots like one projectile every two seconds, I you're think. You're gonna have some trouble. This is gonna require some skills with the Cloud Flyer, and don't forget, he could try to suck you in as soon as you're about to jump. And when he does that, he's immune to any ground count- Oh, so annoying. ...and you may have attempted, so... watch out, I guess?
Starshine Beach Galaxy? Never heard of it. No, seriously, this place is sorely uninspired. It's got Yoshi from Super Mario World, Bianca from Mario Sunshine, and Purple Coins from Galaxy 1? It's also home to Purple Coin Beach. There are other Purple Coin missions on this. Dash, which is likely the fastest Purple Comet star in either of the Mario Galaxy games. Oh boy, 140 coins, 35 seconds, let's go crazy. You remember Purple Coins in the Bone Pen from Galaxy 1, which gave you 150 coins in a full minute to get you 100. Like, really? I could do that in my sleep. Over-exaggeration, right? Yes, I know. Back in 2007, Nintendo had no idea how good I could get. Beach Dash is a different kind of worms. Don't be intimidated by the super short timer. 35 seconds is actually pretty generous because you can usually reach the last set of coins with a few seconds to spare, so you'll know right away if you're about to pass or fail. The real challenge is the joystick controls. You'll have this issue in a few stars in this list where you want to veer slightly right, but you end up turning too sharply and miss a lot of coins. The Wii Wheel might be helpful here, but you can't use it since you're forced to use the nunchuck all the time. The level of precision needed to reach your target is insane. Luckily this control scheme was super easy for me to get to. I guess I have to thank Mario Kart Wii for that. Cosmic Clones and the Chomp Works. So, am I the only one who thought this was hard? I don't hear anyone else ranting about it. I hate this one. The objective in the Prankster Comet mission in the Chomp Works galaxy is pretty straightforward. There's a little hole at the start of the area. You can have Mario jump into it, but it won't do you any good. Only a golden chomp will fit into it, which conveniently rises from the lava, so... Guide it into the hole to make something interesting happen. Let's -a go! Oh shit! I like how- Okay, you cursed again. From now on, I'm gonna send you twice every time you do that. Half the area is flipped on its side. That really adds to the anti-gravity aspect of the game, however unnecessary that may have been. And the chomp doesn't just roll to you either. You gotta jump right in front of it and stand on these platforms and activate these ground pound switches ahead of time. If the platforms are not level with the path, the chomp blows up and you have to start all over. The cosmic clones, much like the coins in Gizmos, Gears, and Gadgets, are there just to distract you. Anywhere you go is basically a danger zone because they follow your exact path, which limits your ability to backtrack. The path is just wide enough that you can probably squeak past them and you can probably get away with running through your own path as long as the Cosmic Clone isn't about to run into you, but I can't imagine the luck you'd need to do so. To top it all off, the lava completely surrounds the path that the Chomp needs to take. This is why I'm thankful for the spin maneuver in the Galaxy games. Trust me, it's gonna help out a lot in these two stars. In fact, it may prove to be completely situational in some cases. Welcome to the Flip Out Galaxy, where you have to spin to trigger the different colored walls so you can wall jump off them, all the while being chased by a string of cosmic clone wall jumpers. They just can't give you a break. Basically, everything I mentioned in the Chomp Works applies here too, so expect to wait a lot, or otherwise have a few close encounters with these guys. The original wall jumping star was already hard enough, believe it or not. This is one of the rare cases where it would be more practical to play as Luigi instead of Mario on account of his jumping advantage, which could possibly outweigh his banana peel shoes. I almost missed some of these long- Wait, his banana peel shoes? Jumps because I wasn't able to spin for obvious reasons. The section with the long row of spiked platforms was by far the most nerve-wracking for me. I could never tell if I was going to make it to the other side before getting spiked, because if I did get spiked, it would very likely translate to death, so I wanted to stop to get this one-up mushroom. The only problem was that I'd very likely run into a cosmic clone should I have attempted it. But the last leg of the mission was the most brutal for me because there's no ground underneath the last set of walls, so run into a cosmic clone, dead. If you're going to try to get the star, watch out for this cosmic clone right about here. Is that always going to be the case? If you can beat this guy, you should be home free. Should be. To be quite honest, I haven't really played this game nearly as much as I've played Galaxy 1, which explains why my ramblings are more like rants this time, like in 3D World. Let me remind you that this is the Mario Galaxy series we're talking about, and as such, I generally don't get frustrated by these levels, mainly because I'm so familiar with how it plays to the point where I can basically beat even the hardest levels first try. Luigi's Purple Coin Chaos is no different, though I would have to agree that it's certainly an upgrade from the 8-bit Luigi's previous Purple Coin star. Located in the Mario Squared Galaxy, presumably after Make Mario a Star, the idea is to collect the 100 Purple Coins in 2 minutes. Um, okay. You'll notice right away that the yellow platforms no longer rotate, which should make for a slightly easier cash grab on paper. Oh, wait. With less time on the clock and fewer coins to work with, you have to always be on your toes. But more importantly, don't look back. Oh, and play as Mario. Luigi's lack of traction turned out to be a big hindrance to the point where I couldn't beat the level of screen Mario. At least with this top 10. The only thing's working for you is that you'll stop the timer when you get the last coin, and you can properly adjust the camera, which is something a lot of these stars needed. But between Luigi's Purple Coins and Luigi's Purple Coin Chaos, which is harder, I'd have to say this one. Purple Coins on the Rainbow Road. Oh, shit! Oh, oh, bitch! Okay, that's four sins. I want ready! I want fucking ready! Oh. Another two sins. Oh hey, the Rainbow Roads in Galaxy 2. That's totally money. The rolling ball gimmick is back- Wait, money? 
and the people don't like it. To me, however, it was extra motivation to get good at it so I could tackle the purple comet star in the rolling coaster galaxy, which looks like it belongs in a trial galaxy set of its own, along with Fleet Glide and Flip Out. No more cosmic clones, I promise. Instead, you'll have to use a rolling ball to collect 100 out of 110 purple coins. A mushroom guy in the distance is there to reveal your relatively short margin of error. Yep, 10 coins. That should drive you from zero to fuck this faster than I can finish- Okay, that's two other more sins. Just Even with my relative consistency with the rolling ball, the fact that I can only miss 10 purple coins puts a lot of pressure on me when I try to get this star. I find that I miss the most coins where the path slants down and to the right, especially while I'm- Then don't think about that fact that hard. I'm also having to avoid falling into those holes. I oddly don't remember having that much trouble with this star, which is weird considering the horrific image I have of Gizmos, Gears, and Gadgets. Not to mention both those missions took one try each for the respective top 10s. But I think we can all agree that purple coins on the rainbow road belongs on my hardest list and for good reason you got a slalom type thing where colliding with the pillar sends you off the course and let's not forget you've only got two minutes good luck so what could be harder than collecting 91 percent of the purple coins on a rolling ball where you can actually slow your roll for extra accuracy how about tall chunks purple coin slide located nope i disagree it in well, you know. What's this to say about helping? Helping is the last thing I want to do when I'm playing video games. And wouldn't you know it, yet another purple coin star! This time we're looking for 100 out of 140 coins, which are all scattered throughout the level and you have to slide down to collect- How is that harder? There's more coins? The slide is kind of what happens when you put imaginary anti-gravity into something like the princess's secret slide, and the end result is death. Death everywhere. And I mean anywhere. These red patches of spikes are supposed to trip me up and we- I don't know how much I want to not get hit, but if I jump too far to either side, the imaginary anti-gravity takes effect and pulls me off the course. I mean, I was trying to stay on the track, but it's like the game had other ideas. Not to mention the uber-responsive joystick controls from the beach dash are back in full force for the star, and that means I get to unnecessarily miss loads of coins. But why don't you just slow down? Because it's a slide and a vault. Wait, was that you? Let me slow down. I'm basically stuck at the same speed until I get hit or die. The closest I can get otherwise is by spinning, but even that's not very effective. I swear, it's easier to miss all the purple coins than it is to get your 100. Don't believe me? Just watch. That doesn't prove it's easier. That proves you did. That proves you got zero coins. But it doesn't prove that it's easier than getting 100. The perfect run. Come on, admit it. You almost forgot that the Grandmaster Galaxy had a prankster comic, didn't you? Not really. But you don't really need to put this on your list. I mean, it's so obvious. I mean, who doesn't find this to be the hardest? No? Huh. Well, at least I would've. If this list weren't exclusive to prankster missions, then the ultimate test would have easily taken one of the lower spots, but who even wants to hear me talk about the same level twice, however game-changing a few differences may be? Granted, I could probably beat this level in my sleep by now. Okay, that's way over-exaggeration. Two sins. But this will always be the hardest start to nab in my book. Confused? Look, being consistent doesn't make the level any easier. You got that? Good. So to get this star, you have to grab Yoshi and fling him past the cavalcade of bullet bills through an aerial minefield, and there's no ground to land on, but after that, the ground is full of switch panels guarded by a sentry being quartet, so you could ditch Yoshi here if you wanted to, but it's a well-known fact that Yoshi is faster than both Mario and Luigi, so I would have to advise otherwise. Next, you have to fling yourself through an electric labyrinth similar to the original electric labyrinth, but this time under the influence of the Cloud Flower. And you can plan on finishing the level as Cloud Mario, so if you don't like the Cloud Flower, then tough shit. You know, you- Okay, two sins. I could just try to gracefully glide past these sentry beams and those goddamn Octo people without setting off them. Okay, I'll just give you one sin because that wasn't a super bad curse word. Swap panels, but I digress. In any case, you can't take your time here. Try that and absolutely everything will catch you at once. Someone once noted how little this game exposes you to pull stars. They were everywhere in Galaxy 1. What happened to your love for gimmicks, Nintendo? Oh yeah, that's right. So here you face more electric fences, mines, and paragoombas. How do you get through this madness? You gotta point your fingers and do the twist. Oh god, now we're getting somewhere. See all these Hammer Brothers coming after you? Yeah, they don't mean shit. You're real t Okay, two sins. Test this to see if you can get from here to defeating the three Boomerang Brothers and remain in one piece. That already sounds like an arduous task. But then you lower Mario's life bar to one, and all of a sudden the difficulty is up to 11. All of a sudden you cannot take a single hit. It's very possible to fall to your death at any given point in the level, even at the very end, right in front of Rosalina. How foolish do you have to be to even consider that? But more importantly, who even saw this coming? Who knew that less than a year after World 9-7 began making us destroy our controllers, we'd be left to tackle well, this madness. Maybe I did, because I found- How does that level have to do with this? I found this level on YouTube long before I played it. Thanks, Count Black. As you can probably assume, this is another one of those super player levels. If you can nab this power star, well, congratulations, well done, have a biscuit. 
But if you want to be a super duper player, then check out Mr. Bean 35,000 VR's Perfect Run Challenge. He's inserted three more stars into the Grandmaster Galaxy for you to reach. The first of which is way up top above the gate, which you guessed it can only be reached with a full set of clouds. The other two are in an entirely new level, one that Mr. Bean himself created called Master Quest. It's meant to be much more challenging than the Perfect Run. Same rules apply, you have to be to unscathed. Keep in mind that many of the moves you'll have to make are awkward. And then, this. Why do you point your arrow that way? Yeah, good luck. This is like the perfect run on fucking crystal meth.